Speaker, let me thank you and the clerk and our staff for all the guidance and support. Let me also thank my colleagues on both sides of the house for the help throughout the past year. Allow me to thank my personal and administrative staff, both in Kingston and St. Mary, my security team, including, including those who volunteer to help to keep me safe. Mr. Speaker, I wish to thank the good people of the greatest constituency in Jamaica, Western St. Mary, for bestowing on me the honor and the privilege of being their representative to this honorable house. A special thanks to my four councillors and one councillor caretaker, my constituency executive and the best set of political workers. I thank my family and close friends for understanding why I miss a birthday, a graduation or any family function that they may host. I have improved, Mr. Speaker, they say, but I know I have a lot of work to do on that front. But I also thank my God who has poured his grace on me, forgive me of my sins and has prepared a rather abundant table in the presence of my enemies. Mr. Speaker, this year, I intend to depart from the normal report on my constituency and speak about rural development. I intend to lay out a pathway, a roadmap, a new deal for rural development. But allow me, Mr. Speaker, to address four points before I speak to the new deal. Mr. Speaker, I am of the view that the National Works Agency should consider allowing parish offices to procure works below $10 million so that local projects in rural Jamaica can be advanced. Yeah. Too many small projects have not been approved. For example, the 40 million road patching project the Prime Minister approved months ago cannot get started in many areas because we are waiting on the procurement department in Kingston. I want to thank the Minister of Finance, Mr. Speaker, for signing and approving the expanded Mason Hall water project for my constituency. This project in its expanded form will see some 5 million gallons of water being lifted from the White River to solve the water problems not only of Mason Hall and Days Mountain, but as was originally proposed, but the, issue, the water issues in Tower Isle, Ryan Nuevo, Charlestown, Three Hills, Valley Bush, Mango Valley, Fellowship Hall, Yalina, Spicy Grove, and Boscobel. Many housing projects will now be able to, to be started, including the National Housing Trust housing scheme in Yalina and the development of the Lighthouse Road settlement upgrade. The Minister of Finance has also allocated enough funds to the Ministry of Education in the recent supplementary budget to purchase lands next to the Taki High School so that we can remove that school from the shift system and have one campus. Currently, the Taki High School has two campuses eight miles apart and is on shift. The Minister of Education has decided to personally oversee the spending and has already instructed the Permanent Secretary to get the purchase completed without delay. This has to be done this financial year, as the Minister of Finance has given his word, his solemn word and commitment to allocate the needed funds to see to the construction of classrooms, labs and offices as soon as possible. To the Minister of Finance and Education, on behalf of the students, teachers and parents and the community, we thank you for your commitment in fast-tracking this well-deserved project. Mr. Speaker, the Minister of Finance has been very kind and gracious to me and the constituency of late. And we hope he will be just as gracious in the next matter. The contract workers from Western St. Mary Minister have asked me to help them to get an increase, to benefit under the compensation review policy. They have asked that you revisit the issue of not giving an increase because they are on contract and they must wait until the end of the contract period. Yet the people in big positions, ministers, CEOs, executive directors, managing directors, every single senior position in government and state agencies have gotten their increase and they too are on contract. But the little people, those, some of those at the parish council, RADA, NWA, NSWMA, schools, etc., the constituency secretaries, 
executive assistants to ministers, etc., are telling me they cannot get an increase. And even the drivers of members of parliament. Minister, this is manifestly unfair. But I have good news for you, Minister. I have checked the law, the regulations, and the Ministry of Finance circulars, and they all allow that contracts can be amended. Minister, my canvas shows some 347 contract workers are in my constituency. And I am not ashamed to tell you that I'm going to need every single one of them and their families when the local government election is called. I'm going to need them and more if I am to retain the five parish council divisions, and I intend to. So, Minister, please give them a much desired increase. Minister, in doing that, don't be irresponsible, Minister. Protect the economic gains we have over the past. So a 20% increase as of April 1, I believe, is a fair deal for the contract workers. Additionally, Minister, we need to have the FinSAC report completed and published. Too many tears, too many broken families, too many destroyed business, and with the recent SSL debacle, it is now more important than ever to have this report. Although there are some who don't want to see this report, the question must be asked in whose interest it is not to have it published. Minister, we campaigned on it. We promised it. The cabinet approved it. Minister, publish the report. Many state agencies and public bodies seem to be misinterpreting the new regulation on board membership. They are writing board members indicated that they have served their three terms and cannot be reappointed. But this cannot be so because the regulations were passed last year and the law cannot be applied retroactively. I am therefore calling on you, Minister of Finance, to issue a memo clarifying the situation. Madam Speaker, on my New Deal for Rural Development, many of the thoughts and ideas are not new, but the first time they have been packaged this way for Jamaica to grow and meet the demands of climate change and external shocks. We must encourage more people to stay in rural Jamaica. So the benefits, the bells and whistles must be brought and made available to the people in rural Jamaica. I must acknowledge that this government is seized with the urgency of the issue, and that is why rural development is placed with local government, and it has been elevated into the name of the ministry, rural development is a priority of this Andrew holness led government. Rural development, however, Mr. Speaker, is not agricultural development. Let's be very clear. Under the New Deal, Mr. Speaker, I am suggesting that the first thing we need to establish is a, high speed, is a free high-speed internet network. This should be delivered by a combination of fiber optic cable and satellite-based internet. The Universal Service Fund, I'm sure, can pay for this. Once this is done, an online polytechnic should be launched and paid for by Heart NTA. This will allow Jamaicans in rural Jamaica to access training and certification while staying at home. Partnerships with other online and open universities will make programs and modules available and accessible to rural Jamaica. Short courses, diplomas, associate and first degrees can be had and most importantly on the job certification will become more accessible. B, a build out of the telemedicine capabilities into our clinics and hospitals, thus leveraging the specialized skills and knowledge to benefit more persons, and this can be paid for by the National Health Fund. C, online business processing offices, BPOs, will allow more people to be employed online in rural Jamaica, and companies that sign up for this should be automatically granted free zone status. D, a high-speed internet network in rural Jamaica will allow the government to build out its own Silicon Valley type location where business incubator services can be offered, facilities for software development, coding, app and game designs, robotics development, and research into advanced technologies. 
a suitable location, Mr. Speaker, could be the Eden Park lands that sits between Central and Western St. Mary, which is close to the Ian Fleming International Airport, the Arroco Besa Marina, the Tower, Tower Isle, and the hundreds of hotel rooms. But most importantly, it is very close to where the undersea cables land, bringing internet into Jamaica. Point two, the development of aviation and the yachting industry. Develop general aviation and the yachting sector. And Mr. Speaker, I'm happy to see that the Airports Authority of Jamaica is finally acting on my suggestion to offer scholarships to children in the parishes that have airports for them to advance careers in aviation. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, we need to continue the discussion I started with the 350,000 strong American Owners and Pilots Association to be our partners in aviation development and to be a site for membership flights. Mr. Speaker, if you own a plane, you need to fly, fly it somewhere. And if you're a pilot, you need to fly in order to keep your license. Jamaica has a reputation of producing the best pilots. Let's leverage all of that. And Mr. Speaker, if 10% of AOPA membership flying to Jamaica annually, that's 35,000 planes per year, or 2,916 planes per month, or 97 planes per day, or 13 planes per day for each of the seven airports, we may not be able to park 13 planes at some of our aerodromes. The same applies for yachts. If you have a boat, you have to sail it. You need places to go. We were far advanced while I was there. So let's cut the talk and the red tape and get going. The new Minister of Transport is a go-getter. So I am confident that he will get it done. The landing and docking fees, supplies, fuel, employment and accommodations will add to our revenue streams. Mr. Speaker, the Airport Authority, the Civil Aviation, Port Authority and the Ship Registry can and must jointly underwrite this expenditure. Three, the bed and breakfast sector is the fastest growing sector worldwide and allow more dollars to be retained locally and give the widest spread to more persons. This sector opens up more possibilities for growth and inclusion of the ordinary Jamaican. But we must commend the Honorable Minister of Tourism for the incredible job he is doing in the sector. He has not only steadied the ship, but has surpassed the pre-COVID growth. Equally, the Minister of Tourism, Edmund Bartlett, has been the only Minister of Tourism that has spent so much on community and product development in rural Jamaica. I therefore call on the Minister of Finance to release more funds from the proceeds of the Tourism Enhancement Fund so that Minister Bartlett and his team can spend more to improve the product and advertise. We must ensure that every bed and breakfast is registered and do a program of advertising in the European market as they are more likely to stay longer and spend more time off the beaten track. And this program could be funded from the Tourism Enhancement Fund. B, I am also calling for a tiered minimum wage system. It should be that if you employ five or less persons, it should be one national minimum rate. Six to 12, another rate, and so on. A housewife, Mr. Speaker, or a small business should not be asked to pay the same minimum wage as a hotel, a gas station, or a BPO. It is unfair. We should give the option of allowing tourism entities to pay their staff in rural Jamaica in foreign exchange. Item four for rural development, water. Rural Jamaica needs a better water distribution network. We do not have a shortage of water in Jamaica, even in the worst drought. We have a distribution of that water problem. So collect from the Mines and Geology Department the underground surveys that shows untapped bodies of water. One mining output fit, geophysics, has made an offer to give up this information for free. They are Jamaicans and should be commended. I made this announcement years ago. We now need not only to collect the information, but to act on it. B, the government needs to allot some 800 to a billion dollars to the rural water company to provide solar pumps and develop small springs in communities. 
This will provide water to communities until the National Water Commission can fix their distribution network. And this can be funded from the Consolidated Fund. Five. Mr. Speaker, we need to sit down with the United States government and reach an agreement to lease a recently retired nuclear vessel to provide cheaper electricity. This vessel can, can be or should be parked at their naval base in Guantanamo Bay for security and maintenance reasons. And via underground cable, deliver electricity here. These vessels can provide some 350 megawatts of power, of power at approximately US 4 cents. If you add two US cents for a transmission and two cents for loan repayment and lease, that's eight US cents. This is far cheaper than what the JPS can produce electricity for, even with the most efficient production technology. This would be a game changer for our manufacturers, mining and tourism operators. B, a properly funded program for rural electrification over two years of approximately 1.5 billion is needed. A combination of pole lines and solar generators in hard to reach places or where it could be more economical. The solar generator can be provided for extremely poor households and some form of sweat equity be developed for persons so that they can do voluntary and community service until a great portion of all is paid. Nothing in life is free. Seven, land tycling. Mr. Speaker, almost 50% of our lands are not titled, and it is worse in rural Jamaica. This government has announced the provision of some 70,000 titles over three years. This is most commendable. We need to accelerate this project. While I was briefly at the Ministry of Housing, I discovered that some 15,000 titles were being held in the ministry, not collected by persons who were already in possession of the land. So we employed three lawyers to review the files and found that a large amount of titles were being held because of small amounts outstanding. I instructed that sums less than 60,000 should be cleared and a total arrived at so that the cabinet could write off the amount in celebration of our 60th year as a nation. The rough check showed that there were 9,000 titles in that category, but 3,000 had other issues. So approximately 6,000 titles can be released if the Cabinet or the Ministry of Finance agrees to write off these small amounts, which came out to approximately $48 million for the remaining 6,000 titles, or $8,000 per an average per title. This is an average of 95 titles per constituency, or 428 per parish. Whether the issue, whatever is the issue with the 15,000 titles, Within three years of the payment of property taxes from them alone would repay whatever funds were written off. Economic improvement to these properties would help to boost tax revenue and create employment. And nothing gives a rural man more stability than having his own land title. The end. The NLA, National Land Agency, must be given enough resources from the Council Fund so as to accelerate the adjudication process and the systematic land titling process. Mr. Speaker, search must be made by all government entities that have land titles for people and a program of giving out the title to the current occupant after suitable checks and verification is done is urgently needed. This is a low-hanging fruit with serious cultural and intergenerational economic gain for families, communities, and this country. The government must fund a program of house repairs. Many persons in rural Jamaica already own their homes, whether by building, inheritance, or acquisition, or gift. They, however, need assistance with repairs. We must fill this need, and this can be funded from the uncollected NHT returns. The social housing program of the government and the indigent program of the Ministry of Local Government and Rural Development are worthwhile programs that fill a need and must be commended. But if the government cannot fund the social housing and, and the housing report repairs, give the MPs the option of taking all five houses allocated per constituency or allow us as MPs to convert at least 40 to 50% of the cost of construction 
into the purchasing of building materials for repairs from approved hardware. I am asking for a balanced option to this housing issue if both cannot be separately and fully funded. National security. Eight. For rural Jamaica to really grow, we need to continue the excellent work on crime that the Honorable Prime Minister and the Honorable Member and his team is doing. This, go this government must continue to provide and increase its national security budget. Least we forget, let me remind all that this government has annually, from 2016, been the government to consistently outspend all other governments in our history on national security. We need, we, need to, we need to get the Social Development Commission, the SDC, to again place a community development officer in all communities. These persons were the points of contact for social services. They taught social graces, conflict resolution, healthy cooking and eating, invited various social agencies into communities, organized community groups, sporting events, career development, family planning and mentorship. They gave direction to communities. We need to go back there. B, we need to study and adopt the El Salvador model of dealing with gangs. We must include under the Enhanced Security Act the provisions for declaring what I call a state of emergency on the violence producer and not on the community. I am confident that the work I started along with Minister Charles on that act will continue. The monitoring and reporting orders, for example, will remain. We must take the DNA and fingerprint samples from persons who are subjected to monitoring orders. But, Minister, if we are going to adopt the El Salvador model, please do not build a super detention facility. Do one for every parish. Place them in or near the JDF camps. Build them so that they can also be used as youth training centers. So that when someone is detained, we can teach them a skill and some soft life skills as well. There must be sections that some are simply just locked away because some are irredeemable. We must install cell phone jammers and a courtroom at each so there is no need to move them. They must be small. So you reduce the opportunity for gang members to network with others and you end up with a bigger problem when they are released. Mr. Speaker, six years ago in El Salvador, it used to be 103 murders per 100,000. Last year, it was eight murders per 100,000. We need to study what they are doing. We need to revamp the Ananda Alert system that I had started while I was at local government and go back to partnering with the municipal corporations. The system was designed to utilize community groups, citizens, and institutions. It not only takes a village to raise a child, it takes a village to protect a child. Mr. Speaker, we must expand the Jamaica Eye system, again started by me, and place cameras in every rural community and roadway. Introduce drones into the monitoring of the island and parish borders, and the drone footage fed into the Jamaica Eye system. An internet network would be in existence, and we could use solar Wi-Fi cameras as well. Mr. Speaker, we need to speed up the deployment of the NIDS. Every Jamaican must have an ID on them at all times. We need to increase the Jamaica Constabulary Force intake by using the existing MOUs in the ministry that was established with community college, colleges to provide one semester of police theory and foundation subjects. And then these persons would be sent to the police college for two months to do the practical aspects of the training. We use it on one batch of 600 using the excess space at the UWI when Minister Charles and myself were there. And it worked. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we need 2,000 trained officers per year for three years to get the full strength and to compensate for retirement and resignations. 
Equally, schools should, should uh, each school, primary and high, should ask the police to vet persons who present to be vendors. And a space must be created on the school compound for vendors. And no one who is not vetted or trained and registered should not be allowed to sell to our school children. Nine, we need to train for export. We need to sit down with the U.S. Department of Education and Labor and identify gaps in the, their economic program and negotiate an agreement so that they can pay or contribute to the training of specific skills and make the persons available to them on a contracted basis. Teachers, nurses, medical support staff, police, trade, skills tradesmen, etc. For example, Minister Charles at the Ministry of Labor should be asking the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to talk to Homeland Security so that we could provide the 2,000 masons and the 1,500 welders and 500 truck drivers that will be needed to help to build a new border wall on sections of the United States' southern border. This is an opportunity, Minister, worth pursuing. Ten, agriculture. A program of teaching hydroponics in our schools must be launched because this will be the basis of our home gardening in the future. Pick and promote crops that we have a distinct comparative advantage, such as turmeric, ginger, lychee, pimento, coconut. Plant an economic amount and have rather teach persons the basic agro-processing. C. Start a program to improve pig and goat herds and production by having artificial insemination centers and graded rams stationed across Jamaica. This will improve the herd quality and quantity. Then work with the processors so there will be no need to import any bacon or pork byproducts. We should, within three years, stop the importation of goat meat, and we will be able to produce and process at least 20% of our milk needs from goats. D, with the internet networks, finally, Minister Hutchinson, chips can be introduced into our animals to reduce theft. Issue registered farmers with shotgun license if they meet the basic requirement and are mentally sound. Use drone technology in planting, monitoring, security, and crop care, including insecticide, water, and fertilizer, fertilizer application. And this will reduce cost and over-application of chemicals. Increase research in targeted areas. Increase soil conservation and encourage organic farming. And create a clearinghouse for farmers using the PC Bank network. Farmers, for example, who sell to a hotel and have to be waiting a long time to be paid, would take their invoice to the PC bank. Who would discount that invoice and pay out the farmer? The PC bank would now be owned, owed by the hotel and the PC bank could charge a normal overdraft fees on that account after the payment due date. So farmers could quickly get working capital and the hotel could smooth out their cash flow and the PC bank would make a profit. Item 11, infrastructure. A rural road improvement program is desperately needed. Plus a rural maintenance program for patching and drain cleaning. Mr. Speaker, Minister Warmington is doing yeoman service in that ministry, but he needs more resources. The rollout of the Lentman program, program must be done without delay. And the NHT should spend 25 to 30 percent of their budget on maintenance of housing schemes. The National Works Agency should have more training programs with contractors so that new technologies and methodology in road and drain maintenance can be introduced. A research program to design and find more suitable ways of treating and building our roads. Contractors who underperform or do not complete their tasks should be suspended from undertaking new contracts for a stipulated period. And we need a program for bridge and river bridge maintenance and river training. Mr. Speaker, if we implement some of these ideas and recommendations, rural Jamaica will be the place to be. Mr. Speaker, the third term is loading. The third term of this government depends on rural Jamaica. This government will achieve these goals if we start now. 
the third term is loading. Mr. Speaker, I am confident, I am confident that the government will accept some of these recommendations because Kingston is not Jamaica. Rural, Mr. Speaker, rural Jamaica is where you can work, raise your families and retire. Mr. Speaker, the third term is loading. I thank you, Mr. Speaker, for your graciousness. Come here, boy.